Today, we're taking a brief look at the Minis Forum BD795i SE, a really interesting motherboard and processing combo. This is a PCIe 5.0 iTex motherboard with an integrated Ryzen 9 mobile processor. Based on the Ryzen 9 7945HX mobile chip with 16 cores and 32 threads with a boost clock of 5.4 GHz, pulling around 100 watts. The 7945HX was originally designed for high-end gaming and productivity laptops. You can get some surprisingly good performance out of this chip. From a distance, you can see fairly quickly that this board doesn't look like any average ITX motherboard. The M.2 storage is on the top, the DIMM slots look a little shorter, and it has a heatsink already installed. At the bottom, we have a reinforced PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot, which will support the latest RTX 50 series graphics cards and below. You get three PWM headers, one USB 3.2 header, a HD audio header, and a front panel connector. We'll start with installing the memory. I have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 mega transfer, sole deal memory. If you're unfamiliar, this is memory used on ununified motherboards and laptops. You can expect to get up to 96 gigabytes or two 48 gigabyte sticks. Next, I'll install the storage. I have a one terabyte Lexar NM790. I use this to run Windows and benchmarks. You secure it down with these plastic tabs. I honestly don't know how I feel about it, but it does get the job done. For the cooling, I'll be going with the Noctua NFA12 25mm Chromax fan. This should be perfect as it's quiet and with good performance. It uses a proprietary CPU cooler, which doesn't use any known mounting systems like LJ1700 or AM5. The heat stack is about 32 to 35 millimeters tall and would allow you to put a full size 120 millimeter fan. In the box, you get the pretty attractive looking backplate. It's not integrated, but with a couple of screws, you'd never know. For connectivity, it's nothing to write home about, but you get your standard 3.5 millimeter audio in and out. Next to that, you get a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, two USB type A ports, this board does not include wireless connectivity, but you're able to populate the PCIe slot with an M.2 2230E key wireless adapter. Beneath the wireless antennas, you have a recess reset button, one USB Type-C port, DisplayPort 1.4, and HDMI 2.1 port to access the onboard Radeon 610 iGPU for basic troubleshooting and light tasks. Lastly, we have two USB Type-A 3.2 ports. This is just a direct transplant into the case and we will see how it stack up against a newer desktop CPU, the 9950X. Again, it's unfair, I know. We are running the stock cooler with the Noctua NFA12 25mm Chromax fan on the 7945HX and the Deepcool AN600 with the 15mm Chromax fan on the 9950X. The AN600 is more robust than the stock cooler on this one, but it's more than capable of cooling a mobile chip. Both will be running in PCIe 4.0 because we don't have the new 5.0 riser for the Form T1. Looking at both boards side by side, you can see that the VRM and M.2 heatsinks are way more robust on the X670EI. However, you'll need that running a power hungry chip like the 9950X. Instead of an M.2 stack, the BD795i has two slots parallel to each other and limited to PCIe 4.0 versus the 5.0 on the X670EI. Both have three PWM headers, but in different locations. I prefer the locations on the top, but that's not a huge deal. The ASUS board does have a USB-C header, while the BD795i doesn't. You also get a reinforced PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot on both boards, but the ASUS also includes a reinforced USB 3 header. The ASUS board has vastly more rear connectivity options with a total of 10 USB ports with a mix of USB-C and USB 3.2 while the BD795 has half that, but the ASUS board is missing a display port. The ASUS board also includes Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. It looks like an easy win for the 9950X setup until you realize the motherboard and CPU costs over double the price of the BD795i at almost 850 US dollars, and you definitely don't get double the performance on the 9950X. There are AM5 boards that cost far less than this one, but with a 16 core chip, you'll likely aim for the higher end boards. Let's get into some productivity and gaming benchmarks. I ran these tests with an 85 degree thermal throttle limit because I wanted to see how well the performance scales. The 9950X is set to a curb optimization of 35 and negative 20 on the 7945HX. 
Running the Cinebench R23 multi-core test, the 7945HX runs at 76 degrees while the 9950X reaches the artificial 85 degree limit under load. That's a 9 degree increase for the 9950X, likely due to higher power draw and stronger performance scaling. We see the 7945 consume about 100 watts while the 9950X draws 150. That's a 50% increase in power consumption for the 9950X. The mobile chip score is 33,784, or the 9950X reaches 38,996 points. That results in a 15% increase in performance, but at a 50% higher power draw. In a single core workload, both CPUs run very close in temperature. The mobile chip reaches 58 degrees, while the 9950X hits 59, virtually no thermal difference. For power, we see 35 watts versus 49 watts on a 9950X. This results in a 40% increase in power draw for the 9950X. For the R23 single core score, the 7945 HX score is 1,940 points, while the 9950X reaches 2,276. That's a 17% increase in single threaded performance for the 9950X. In Cinebench R24 multi core, the 7945 HX runs at 75 degrees, while the 9950X reaches 85 degrees, similar to the R23 results. The 7945HX draws 100 watts while the 9950X jumps to 154 watts. That's a 54% increase in power consumption. The 7945HX scores 1,797 while the 9950X reaches 2,212 points. This translates to a 23% performance increase, again at the cost of 54% increase in power. For R24 single core performance, temperatures remain nearly identical with the 7945HX at 57 degrees and the 9950X at 58 degrees. The 7945HX consumes 38 watts while the 9950X draws 48 watts, a 26% increase in power overall. This translates to a score of 114 versus 140 points on a 9950X. That's a 22% increase in performance. In the blender, the 7945HX stays at 69 degrees while the 9950X runs significantly warmer at 84 degrees. That's a 15 degree increase in temperature for the 9950X. For power, the 7945X consumes 93 watts while the 9950X spikes up to 162. That's a 74% increase in power consumption, making this one of the least power efficient workloads. The 7945HX score is 478 while the 9950X reaches 590. That's a 23% performance increase, but at a 74% higher power draw. Gaming is where the scales level out. Running Cyberpunk 2077 4K, the 7945HX runs at 76 degrees, while the 9950X is slightly cooler at 72 degrees. The 7945HX consumes 90 watts, while the 9950X uses 94. We see 75 frames per second versus the 82 frames per second on a 9950X. That's a 9% increase in gaming performance at almost no extra power. In 1440p, the 7945HX runs at 81 degrees, while the 9950X is slightly cooler at 79 degrees. The 9950X consumes about 19% more power. The 7945HX averages 149 frames per second, while the 9950X reaches 158 frames. That's a 6% increase in frames per second, but at a 19% more power consumption, making it less efficient. The Ryzen 9 9950X consistently delivers better performance with a 23% uplift in productivity workloads and 9% better FPS in 4K gaming. However, power consumption is much higher with workloads like Blender requiring 74% more power for only 23% higher performance. The 7945HX is far more power efficient, especially in multi-core workloads. In gaming, the 9950X provides diminishing returns at 1440p, with only a 6% increase in FPS, but requiring 19% more power. If power efficiency and cost savings are your main priority, the BD795ISE is an excellent option. If raw performance and flexibility and upgradability are your most important factors, the Ryzen 9 9950X is the better choice. So ultimately, the decision depends on whether you prioritize power efficiency and value or absolute performance and upgradability. In my opinion, you should seriously consider this option if you're going small form factor, $400 versus $750 for the motherboard and the 7950X or $850 with the 9950X. They're releasing an X3 version soon that should yield better gaming performance. Maybe I'll compare this to that when it's available. What do you think of the BD795 ISE? It's a solid option to consider. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Thank you. Have a nice day.